Yes, hello and welcome to Bloke on the British Muzzle Loaders Range again. Uh, I'm still here in Canada with uh, Rob, and uh, one of the things we've been looking at is obscure British training drills from the Second Absolutely. World War era that uh, sort of were we, we, we rediscovered them by reading through a memoranda that um, uh, that the Vickers Machine Gun uh, Society Society are they called? Doesn't really matter, but make a donation. Yeah. Anyway, we'll put a link in the description below. Uh, they've made available all these obscure pamphlets and weapon training memoranda. One of the things we came across that really interested us was something called advanced snap shooting. Now, Rob's already demonstrated snap shooting several times on uh, on his channel in the First World War context, with target comes up for however many seconds it is, three, four. Uh, usually, it was anywhere between five and nine seconds. Ooh, actually, yeah, for the long range stuff. Yeah, quite long. Um, and this was used to sort of train soldiers to identify, aim at, and shoot a fleeting enemy target that presented itself. Um, however, that was still relatively slow and very, very formalistic. And in a 1944 weapons training memorandum, uh, there was something rather more advanced. It was so advanced, they called it advanced snap shooting. And uh, Rob has the reference on a piece of paper. What is that? This is my advanced piece of paper. <clears throat> What witchery is this? Anyway. <laughs> so what I have here is the details for the advanced snap shoot. Uh, the object, of course, was to exercise men in quick shooting from the kneeling and standing positions in the open. Uh, the layout generally was on a, a conventional range setup with a, a set of butts where the targets would appear and disappear. Uh, for purposes of our exercise, as you'll soon see, uh, this is was not possible, and we relied on some pop-up targets that we had rigged with some rope to appear and disappear to simulate those targets appearing from behind the berm in the butts. Uh, the details of the practice were as follows. Fires were to begin at the 100-yard uh, point, loaded in the standing position. On the order advance, they were to uh, uh, advance to the 90-yard point, whereby the range conducting officer would indicate by arm signal uh, for a telephone call to the butts to expose the target for a whopping two seconds. Now, don't forget, you're walking now and have to then adopt the standing position, correction, the kneeling position at 90 yards and then engage a target within two seconds. Uh, once that engagement was done, the word advance was given again and the fire removed to the 80 yard point where he uh, conducted another single round kneeling application in the snap form. Again, on the word of command advance, he moved then to the 70 yard and engaged a target from the standing position. He did the standing uh, position two more times at the 50 and the 30 yard point. So that's a total of five exposures, mm -hmm. two seconds per at five different ranges, ranging from 90 to 30 yards. The bayonets were to be fixed on the Mark IV, or correction, the <clears throat> the number four rifle, only with the Mark II back sight. Yep, the L-type flip. This is because uh, it is sighted rather higher than the uh, usual ghost ring uh, on the Mark I milled back sight. It does finish the description by indicating that small uh, changes could be made depending on local conditions. Uh, change of position, change of range, etc. The overarching concept, though, mm -hmm. was to engage targets in what appears to be an exceptionally quick exposure, mm -hmm. two seconds, and that, from the move. And how big were the targets at the different ranges? So, it says that uh, at the 90 and 80 yard point, mm -hmm. you shot at a number two target. At the 70 and Oof. 50 tar uh, fifty Oof. yard target. I'm ignorant, what's the number two target? It looks like that. You can cut to that. Mm -hmm. At the 70 and 50 yard points, they shot at a figure 4A, which is a modification of the uh, World War I version mm -hmm. of the figure 4. And finally, at the 30 yard point, they fired at a figure 5. So, in summary, in general terms, at the, uh, the two longest distances, it was a uh, sort of thighs, torso, and head target. Uh, at the next two uh, ranges, it was a sort of almost head and shoulders prone rifleman sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And at the shortest range, it's a, it's a head target. That's right. And uh, the aim for a trained man was to make his shot in one second, so halfway through that exposure. So this seems quite challenging. And uh, so let's have a look at how we got on. Absolutely.
so there you go as you can see we both shot the same rifle due to uh, reasons um, <laughs> we had two but one didn't really quite perform for us didn't so, like my ammunition no and it didn't neither of them liked the factory ammunition that no. uh, we've been generously donated by a kind uh, kind donor but that was a challenging practice was it not unbelievably really um, personally I'm used to snap shooting in the sort of four five six second range mm -hmm. uh, and at that in a static position whether you've moved to a position and shot yeah but you've engaged the target from a standing static position yeah this the, probably the, the the biggest takeaway in terms of difficulty for this exercise for me personally was the fact that you are moving and you stop and engage the target when the target appears but it only appears for two seconds so you're moving from a, an, an alert position yep. of, uh, to some degree, stopping, bringing the rifle up, sighting the rifle, and engaging the target within two seconds, yep. which I found exceptionally difficult yeah. at those ranges. Yeah, and particularly as you were losing the light. So we were a little more generous. We, we used that get out of jail clause at the end there, at the longer ranges in the lower light. Um, another thing you might, may or may not have noticed, that I shot the whole thing with uh, the ghost ring. Uh, contrary to popular belief, you can shoot almost as well with the, the uh, two tenths of an inch ghost ring as you can with the one tenth of an inch thing. I had to aim high. I had to consciously aim high because these are Rob's uh, lead bullet loads. They're ballistic, ballistically different to factory. They, they, they're a bit more rainbow trajectory. So I believe that you were mentioning that you were essentially aiming at the head yeah. for the figure two, the, the sort of yeah. head, shoulders and torso target. Yeah, and then the others I was aiming sort of at the top edge. Um, and Rob decided he would use the the, uh, the flip up at a range set for a hundred a uh, hundred yards. Um, I th I'm a big fan of the Ghost Ring. I think they they were really onto something good. Uh, the light was a bit better when I was shooting because I shot first. Uh, but even so, it 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 does exactly what it's supposed to do. It's quick. It doesn't obs obscure your view. You don't have to search. Um, and uh, combat accuracy, combat ranges, it is, it is brilliant. And what was your experience with the, uh, the flip-up? As you mentioned, the light was fading towards the end of the practice, and that did play a really huge part mm -hmm. uh, it, towards the end, especially even though you're at a relatively close range. Uh, the low light, the small aperture, not the best combination. And by far, uh, the ghost ring would have been the better choice. Mm -hmm. uh, I did select the smaller aperture just uh, as a, in juxtaposition Mm -hmm. to uh, the bloke's use of the ghost ring and that way we could comment on them both mm -hmm. um, I did find that the, the difficulty did increase with the light for sure yeah yeah and uh, I mean compared to some others like the, the the Springfield there's a lot of there's a lot of material around the hole on these sites so they do if you're not if you haven't got your eye actually quite up to it the, it cuts a lot quite a lot of the world out I mean for a precise shot at longer range where you got a little bit more time there's no problem with having that much of your world shuttered out like that. But at, at close range, when you're trying to do something quickly, it... Uh, this is by far the better yeah. uh, piece of kit here. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I've done other stuff uh, back in Switzerland with uh, the L, the, the two-position L-flip, which is a tenth of an inch uh, hole. And I've certainly found that, that the, the, the two-tenths of an inch ghost ring is, uh, hmm. is far faster. But we both scored reasonable hits. Um, for a first ever go I mean that was the first time we'd ever shot that uh, practice is akin to cheating on bloke on the range so uh, I think that was important to see how two skilled shooters would get on with that sort of from fresh from never having tried it, and plus running around with the cameras and uh, because of the pulling of the targets it wasn't actually possible to film the practice in one continuous swoop we'd need like a, a team of well, three four five people around us and it was just us so uh <laughs> one man pulling one man shooting yep as it were you were my wingman i was your wingman <laughs> anyway so there we go i think that about sums uh, sums up that uh, extremely challenging practice yeah i mean again to the, the salient takeaway for that was the simple the time in the reference of only two seconds mm -hmm. and by in any uh situation a two second uh snap shoot yeah that is going to be difficult in any circumstance yeah absolutely but although it's slightly formalistic it's still battlefield relevant it's trying to get a bit of battlefield relevance onto the training program late war based on on battlefield experience presumably
So thank you so much for watching. I hope that was at least vaguely interesting. Uh, please, if you haven't already subscribed to both of our YouTube channels, Bloke on the Range and British Muzzle Loaders, please do so. Uh, we both are on Patreon and we will gratefully uh, accept any support that your generosity might uh, incite you to uh, give to keep our rickety barges afloat and keep us shooting and uh, in crazy climactically inappropriate wool uniforms in 30 more than 30 degrees in the Canadian summer uh, we're, we're sweat literally sweating to produce this content here and uh, see you again on uh, the British Muzzle Loaders range sometime bye bye